Welcome to the Weka Technical Demonstration Series. Today, we're going to be talking about auto scaling groups with Weka on AWS. In this video, we'll be talking about how auto scaling groups have integration with Weka, how ASG specifically works, and then we'll do a demonstration including automation of ASG with Weka, FIO performance with expansion, and then shrinking of a cluster. As a leader in software-defined storage, Weka has the ability to be run in multiple configurations. The first is as a dedicated storage server with separate application servers. The second one is a converged deployment where you have the applications running on the storage itself. And the third one, and of interest to this, to this demonstration, is the ability to run in a public cloud. Of note is that Weka, because we are software-defined, we use the exact same code binaries for all of these deployments. One of the benefits of running in the cloud is to allow customers to move to an OPEX style consumption model while allowing significant flexibility in the provisioning of new application servers to talk to the storage clusters. Feedback from our customers has been extremely positive, but they've noted that Weka is sometimes a little bit rigid in how we do this. So part of being able to move to the cloud means that we want to provide the same flexibility to the Weka data platform as you do with your applications. If you grow your applications, you want to be able to grow your storage at the same time in order to accommodate everything. And at the end, you also want to be able to shrink it back. With the Weka Auto Scaling Group integrations, you'll be able to dynamically scale out from anywhere from six storage hosts all the way out to hundreds. All you have to do is set your desired instance capacity via the AWS console or automation methods, and it will handle the rest. In fact, we use native AWS services and automate them in order to make this happen. We'll use the AWS auto scaling service as well as Lambda in order to do both automation and monitoring. As a side benefit of our integration with auto scaling groups, we add additional logic into the system to improve service levels and resiliency of the storage cluster as it's being hosted inside of AWS. The steps to setting up auto scaling integration are very simple. First, we go to start.weka.io to create a CloudFormation stack, which we then import and begin to set up a storage cluster. Next, we'll go to the Weka GitHub, grab the Weka CTL code, which provides the integration and you set a few parameters and policies for auto scaling. Once that's in place, Weka CTL will then build Lambda monitoring and the auto scaling groups for the cluster. Now by using the auto scaling dashboard in the AWS console or by automation, you can grow and of course shrink your cluster down as you need. To begin, We've already gone to start.weka.io and built ourselves a cluster. This is an eight host cluster and it's called ASG-Demo. In the cloud, most people try and automate their environment as much as possible. So today, instead of using the AWS console, we're actually going to use a custom Jenkins pipeline that we've built, which uses Ansible scripts and standardized AWS API calls to do our scaling up and down. As part of this pipeline, we're gonna go ahead and generate a bunch of IO, scale the cluster up, generate a whole bunch of IO again to compare the performance of the two, and then we'll go ahead and scale the cluster down. Let's go ahead and start in the Jenkins interface. In order to automate this environment, all we have to do is plug in the stack name, what the AWS region is, tell it that we want to run FIO to generate the IO, how far we want the cluster to grow, and eventually what's the minimum amount that we want to shrink it back down to. Jenkins then plugs all these parameters into its pipeline and begins running the entire script as shown. We're going to speed this up a little bit so that you don't have to wait the full time, but we'll go ahead and start generating the IO now. To give you an idea about what the behind the scenes automation looks like, that pipeline is actually built of all of these parameter sets. We've taken them and put them in, as you can see here, by using Python inside of an Ansible playbook. By doing this, we're using a common programming language to automate the entire process of this pipeline.
part of a good automation build means that you should also have full logs for everything that's happening. In this particular case, for each stage of the pipeline, we can go ahead and view those logs and see what the system is doing. By going to the CLI on one of the Weka hosts, we can go ahead and see how much IO is currently being generated. This is the instant reading, not the average, which we will show later. Another way of monitoring the system is to go to the GUI. Inside of the GUI, we can also see what performance looks like. This is a very dynamic way of seeing IOs that are happening within the system. And as you can see, it's currently going through various stages of the FIO process, from building more files in, to doing heavy reads for throughput, to doing IOP level types of work. Again, later on, we'll show the averages of all of this. And of course, as is good hygiene, as we mentioned before, we've gone ahead and logged everything, including the output of the IO generation via FIO. All of the averages are tracked here inside of the stage logs. We'll go ahead and review them later, and I'll show you a slide with all of the results. Next up in the pipeline is cluster expansion. During this process, the Jenkins pipeline will send commands via that Weka CTL GitHub code to AWS. AWS will then have ASG add EC2 instances into the cluster, at which point Weka software is loaded and the hosts are phased into the Weka cluster itself. You can see that visually coming up. In the Jenkins pipeline, you can see that the process of growing the cluster has already started. It's estimating that it will take a little over 17 minutes for this to complete. In the GUI, we can see the process of new hosts being phased in, as well as drives being phased in and having data redistributed across all of those drives. Once the phase in is complete and all the data has been completely redistributed, you'll be able to see that not only are we up to 16 hosts in the cluster, but that full protection and distribution of the data has occurred. The next step is to go ahead and run FIO again. This time, however, we're going to do it against the larger 16 host cluster. We'll monitor the performance through the GUI this time for a couple of the FIO workloads. The results are very clear. Weka was incredibly linear when we grew the cluster from eight hosts to 16 hosts. By doubling the cluster size, we doubled the performance of reads, we doubled the throughput of writes, and provided a seamless experience for our customers. And now that our FIO workloads are done, we're gonna go ahead and shrink this cluster back down to its original eight hosts. We'll redistribute the data from the hosts that are being removed onto the hosts that will remain, at which point the cluster will be back to its original configuration. This is reflective of many customer use cases in the hybrid world. They'll take a workload, burst it up to the cloud, use a significant amount of resources to process that workload, and then when they're done, they'll shrink it back down to save money. The growing and shrinking process is actually quite rapid. As you can see here from the logs, it took 18 minutes to grow and only 20 minutes to shrink the cluster back. Weka makes this process highly efficient and makes your storage adaptable and elastic, which is the promise of what the cloud can deliver.